Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to go over Chapter 7, Checkpoint, the green exercise in the book on page 385. I typed it up into a Word document here on the screen so we can highlight and do stuff with it. Um, so in this exercise, they're asking for the main idea of the paragraph and then which writing pattern the author used. In number one, this comes from a music appreciation textbook. Wolfgang Amadeus but Mozart, a musical prodigy born in Salzburg, Austria in 1756, had an astonishing early history. By the time he was six, he could play the harpsichord and violin, improvise fugues, write minuets, and read music perfectly at first sight. At the age of eight, he wrote a symphony, at eleven an oratorio, at twelve an opera. By his early teens, Mozart had behind him many words that would have brought credit to a composer three times his age. All right, so who or what are we talking about in this paragraph? We're talking about Mozart. And what is our main idea? All right, so here they talk about Mozart is a musical prodigy born in Austria, had an astonishing early history. B, by the time he was six, he could play the harpsichord, violin, improvise, write, and read. Well, if we remember our, th our rules about state of main idea, is the word Mozart in the sentence? Nope, so it can't be that. So if we had changed he to Mozart, possibly. C, at the age of eight, he wrote a symphony, at 11, an oratorio, at 12, an opera. Again, the word Mozart is not in there, so it doesn't count. D, by his early teens, Mozart had behind him many works that would have brought credit to composer, composer three times his age. Yes, but it doesn't have really our main point, which is that he had an astonishing early history. So A is what would be our main idea. Okay, so that is our, oops, that is our main idea. And so the rest of this is our supporting details. Okay, so is this a definition pattern where we're defining a term? Are we listing things and the order doesn't matter? Is a sequence, are we listing things but the order does matter? or as a comparison contrast, showing similarities and differences. Well, we're not showing similarities and differences and we don't have a term, so we're listing here, <clears throat> but does the order matter? So here we're talking at, about Mozart at the age of six, um, at the age of eight, uh, 11, 12, and then in his early teens. So when we're talking about age like this, does the order matter? Yes, it does. This is similar to the paragraph that we looked at in the PowerPoint with Louis Armstrong, okay? So order matters, so C is going to be our answer. This is our pattern. All right, number two comes from a business communication textbook. What is the difference between monochronic cultures and polychronic ones? According to American anthropologist and cross-cultural researcher Edward T. Hall, monochronic cultures treat time as a resource, whereas the polychronic ones' relationships are emphasized. When U.S. managers feel offended because a Latin American manager also sees other people during their appointment, the two kinds of time are in conflict. Okay, so here, what's our topic? We're talking about monochronic and polychronic cultures. Okay. So our main idea then, is it the first sentence, which is a question? No, remember our state of main idea is never a question. Uh, according to American anthropologist Edward T. Hall, monochronic cultures treat time as a resource, uh, whereas in polychronic ones, relationships are emphasized. Well, we've got the kind of the main point and we've got our terms. And then C, when US managers feel offended, what happens? So really our best bet right now is B for our um, main idea, okay? So that is our main idea. And so here, what kind of pattern are we using? Are we listing things where the order doesn't matter in a list pattern? Are we listing things where the order does matter in a sequence? Are we comparing and contrasting, showing differences and similarities, or are we showing a cause and effect? Well, we can tell because in the very first sentence, they use the word difference. Um, then they use the word whereas to show difference as well. Um, and so here they're showing the difference between 
a monochronic culture and a polychronic one. So that means it's the comparison contrast is our writing pattern in this paragraph. All right, number three um, actually was a writing pattern that we had not talked about. Um, but if you want to take a look at it, you can. It's dealing with art and where things are placed in a painting. And so that is a spatial pattern. Number four, we're looking at a sociology textbook. Gender in most sociological writing refers to the social and cultural characteristics that distinguish women from men. In our society, such characteristics include the different clothing that men and women wear. Another example is the expectation that boys shouldn't cry when they are hurt. Gender is said to be a social creation, not a biological one. All right, so our topic for this paragraph is gender. Okay, it's in bold, and that's what the whole paragraph is about. So what is our main idea? All right, are we saying gender in most sociological writing refers to the social and cultural characteristics that distinguish women from men, and it is said to be a social creation, not a biological one. That sounds good. It has our, as our term, and it defines it. B, in our society, such characteristics include different clothing. Is the word gender used? No, so it can't be that one. C, another example, is the word gender used? Nope. D, gender is used here, but does it clearly define it? No. So for us, our main idea is going to be that first sentence. But what they did was they combined the first sentence with the last sentence. Okay? All right, so now we have to decide what kind of pattern do we have here? Do we have a term that we're defining and explaining? Do we have a list where the order doesn't matter? Are we comparing and contrasting, showing similarities and differences? Are we showing a cause and effect? So obviously here we have our term and we're explaining it. So therefore this writing pattern is um, definition. Finally, our last paragraph from a criminology textbook. A rash of school shootings during the 1998-1999 academic year caused great concern across the nation. Criminologists, police, educators, lawmakers, and parents struggled to figure out why these young men and boys decided to pick up firearms and destroy the lives of their teachers and classmates. Many blamed the easy access to guns. Others pointed to the social isolation these students experienced. Still others look to broader sociological explanations. All right, so what or who are we talking about? We're talking about these school shootings that took place. All right, so let's take a look. What's the main idea? Is it a rash of school shootings during the 98-99 academic year across the country? Is it B, criminologists, police educators, lawmakers, and parents struggle to figure out why these young men decided to pick up firearms? Well, our topic really, the school shootings isn't in there. And then B, many blamed easy access. Others pointed to this, still others pointed to that. No. So really our best bet for our main idea is this first one. Oops, wrong color. There we go. All right. So that's the first sentence. And then let's take a look. What are we doing in this paragraph? And how do we know what writing pattern? So do we have a term that we're defining? Uh, not really. Okay. Sequence. Are we listing things where the order matters? Mm, not really. Okay. So are we compared, comparing and contrasting two different things? No. What is left is cause and effect. And this has been a big one because a lot of people have wondered about what caused these school shootings. And we see that in that last sentence there. So some blamed um, the easy access and guns. Others blamed, um, others pointed to the social isolation. Still others looked to the broader sociological explanations. Okay. And they struggled, struggled to figure out why. That's a big one here. Why did, why are these shootings happening? Okay. So cause and effect is the writing pattern for this last one. All right. So in our next uh, video, we're going to take a look at testing your understanding from the book and go over that as further examples of trying to figure out the writing pattern um, for a paragraph.